is your door. Please ignore all the bloodshed and carnage that I've created that's going to scar you mentally and emotionally forever. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with the season finale of The Witcher season three. We're now into episode eight, which is called The Cost of Chaos. So the last episode was pretty much Siri focused. She was dropped in the middle of a desert that wasn't far from, I can't remember which major city, but anyways, she had to go through real survival skills <laughs> from being dehydrated to almost starving to death. And then if that wasn't bad enough, her subconscious was attacking her with all kinds of just, you know, her insecurities, the fears that she had, the weight that she's been carrying with the the role and responsibilities that she has in this world going forward as this new queen to be as someone who is considered to be the answer to all the problems on the continent. So yeah, she went through a lot. She had a lot of visions. Again, I'm not sure how many of those were real, how many of, the, how many of those were manifestations from her imagination. But either way, what really stood out is that she had a determination to survive no matter what and to get through it and get back to her family no matter what. And we did see a very, I think, rather poignant moment in there where she said that I release or relinquish my powers when she was being tempted by that um, ancestral elf who was telling her that, you know, she had to embrace the chaos and the fire and let it consume her and burn everything down. And she said she didn't want the weight of that and she would rather relinquish her powers instead. And we see after that happened, it looks like she lost consciousness, but then she was found. And from the sounds of things, she was found by um, bounty hunters or someone who just realized who she was and that there would be a very large prize for bringing her in. So that was kind of what ended her journey. And then outside of that, we had a very little on Geralt. He is in a really, really bad way. The healers have done all that they can, but they basically say that he's done. There's not. He's not long for this world. But we see that when Yaskir showed up and told him that Yennefer was okay, but that she was missing and that the the word was that she was being captured and taken back to, um, not to Sintra, but to the South, Ger Geralt really looked very disturbed by that news. That's definitely not what he wanted to hear. And yeah, very little on Yennefer as well. As I said, she was just basically saying she was searching for Siri, but she had no idea where she had gone. So let's jump into the episode. But just before I, a reminder that I do a lot of reactions here to all kinds of different shows. And even though this is the last one for this one, I will be tuning into a lot of other new shows. And whenever season four comes back, I'll most likely be reacting to that. So if you'd like to join me and support me, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And please show some love to this video in comments below with likes and all that good stuff if you're loving it. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right about now. Ma'am, that is not a ladylike way to sit. You're awake. Barely. And pleasant as ever. <laughs> Would you be pleasant? He's kind of dying. Hot especially for you. Yum. I don't want it. Oh, because that's going to help you heal. Keep him alive. Why is he so special? Because he only, is. He's the only one who protects your souls. Mm hmm Many that do are broken themselves. Yep. And Geralt is so broken. Like I've been saying, you can't leave unless you get better. And you won't get better unless you let us help you. Period. Grouse? Eat the grouse. Give me the damn grouse. Thank you. Oh, now you want it. Give it to him. It's very weird energy between us. <laughs> It's a little sexy. It is. These are the healing waters? Because it, it looks a little like acid. I'm just saying. Maybe someone mixed up the bottles. Uh, might I suggest we wait until your leg class stops visibly oozing? Right? Oh, so you're not completely useless. But I was wrong. Series what keeps him protecting going. Her, protecting his family is who he is. Yeah. I'm not going to stop him. If he needs my help. He'll ask. He has it. So you're both fucking lunatics. Aw, oh, you're catching on. Yes. Because you'd be dead now. <laughs> you can almost hear him going, vroom, 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 vroom. Listen, if there's one thing, no matter what you are, human or mutant, that people do not do well with, it's feeling help. No one wants to feel like they're not capable of doing the most basic things. So I can only imagine how frustrating this is for Geralt, who's been very self-sufficient for decades. But Yaskir's right. If there's anything that's going to keep Geralt's drive and will to live going, it's the fact that he needs Ciri. How do we not see it? 
you knew before it really was. Damn. Damn. Ouch. This doesn't sound like it's reversing. It sounds like it might be making things worse. And be sure you're not going to inhale any of whatever that is. Stop. We can't just leave them there. What else? A proper burial. Can we worry about that later, though? I mean, I, f I feel you. I do, but... Berate us all you want. But these girls were killed here in Redania. Mm -hmm. You always propped up the Brotherhood. It's importance in protecting chaos, but... Is this the really time, cool. Philippa? No, you destroyed whomever, just so that Vizima would finally see you lurking in Dijkstra's shadow. Truth? Do we hit a button? Partners. And I can trust Dijkstra. Yeah, like I trusted Vilgefortz. Mm-hmm. Don't be trusting men. That's, that's the moral story here, people. We fight to make sure this never happens again. You know, she's right. Y'all sitting there having cat fights over your man. Men, whatever they were. And Philippa, my good sis, if we're being real, Vilgefortz might have been an asshole, but at least he was good looking. I mean, what the hell we can say about Dijkstra? Yeah, I said his name the way I said it. Back to the scene of the crime, hey sis? That's bold. So allow me to serve you as Imperial Governor of Zintria and Francesca. Give her people the home they deserve. I must say, Fringilla death becomes you. Thank you. That's because I'm that fine. You may lead the elves in Sintra, the old, the sick, the ones who, who cannot fight. The score you tell, they stay with us. Mm -hmm. Is this man actually posing for a painting right now? Wow, I thought you were grieving your wife or whatever. Not even on a real horse. I thought you might be dead, Dijkstra. I swore I sent for you yesterday. I came as fast as I could. Yes, corpses have come faster. That was the joke. Ah. Examples must be made. Oh. I'm truly sorry. <laughs> because I know how much you like Philippa. But someone's got to pay. Wow. So it's Philippa that suffers. Mm. What did the girls just tell you? What did Tisea just tell you? Oh, gosh, you still look terrible, Geralt. Maybe a bath would help. Have we tried that? It does wonders for the spirit. You gotta spank that sword. You'd be dead now. Go back to bed, Witcher. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it's okay, Geralt. Everyone, everyone has to heal sometime. You're tagging along to get one more song out of him when he dies. Damn, can't say it out loud. Get at least two or three songs. I would milk his death for like. Thank you. Do I know I yes, or what? <laughs> it's complicated, sis. They love each other, just not overtly. Just because you are hiding from the world doesn't mean that I have to. Ooh, a little truth might be in there. Whatever they did to you, I hope they pay. Mm hmm. Like the world works that way. Sadly, that's true. Sometimes the people who do bad things don't necessarily pay in the way you think. But I promise, people who do truly evil things never know peace. No matter what it might seem like from the outside. It really came to our too. So if it was just not pregnant, she was kicked out. Mm, that's probably happened to Geralt's mom. My focus is here on Siri. If I go to him without her, I've failed. We're all worse failures. <laughs> not for Geralt. Just feeling sorry for yourself. And letting Vilgefortz make you question who you are. Yeah, you didn't screw up here. He did. You are the strongest force I've ever known. Period. You are to say it degrees. You are our mother. And we need you. I need you. Period. She needed that. Never let some man make you feel like you're less than. But also, I get... I understand, like, to say it feels stupid, but I've always said, if somebody hurts you and takes your trust and abuses it, it is not your fault. They made that choice. Never blame yourself for someone deciding to take your trust. All right, Tasea, what are you up to? I'm scared. I'm very scared. Okay, we switch scenes. I don't know. I don't like it. Not her getting high. It always has consequences. Is she die. I'm wondering if that lightning thing did more than just age her. But they have been setting it up to make it seem as though 
Yennefer is going to take her place. Teaching you has been the biggest bright spot of my life. Oh, Piglet. It's a light. It's a note. That's not good. But I'm afraid I cannot. Why? And the best thing it can do for us is die. <laughs> she knows. She took her own life. Oh. <sighs> to say a why. Such a powerful being taken out that simply. Ah, uh, to say a. I don't know. I'm wondering if it's guilt. I'm wondering if it's because she took too much out of herself with that spell. Is it because she just felt like she let everyone down? I mean, she's been alive a long ass time. Maybe she just felt like it was time on top of everything else, but. It's my fault. How? The let Malkavons made me. Let? My brother, you were not prepared. Okay, now let's stop at the self blame and see what we can do next, guys. And if it's not fair. That's a very, very, very fair way to feel. I know it's a very touchy subject when people lose someone to that type of death, but it's very, very natural to feel angry after that. I will make Elgifort's pay. Mm -hmm. I don't care if he's an emperor. I'll make him be their pay too. He kind of runs on revenge. Tell me this is the last time I'll see you. I mean, technically, this is the last time we'll see Henry. Damn it, Netflix, you should have tripled his pay. You can do this, Yen. You're stronger than all these dryads put together. What you gonna do? No one's gonna be left to spank you with their special whip anymore? Yeah, you, he's your nice little sub. I had a feeling he was gonna die. Yeah, that king really had a no idea who he was dealing with, huh? I thought if it wasn't Philippa, someone was gonna take him out. Always wear my blood for safe, Benjamin. Not in some unknown sphere, at the hands of a girl with unknown powers. It's too risky. She's lost a lot now. She's being a little bit more realistic. Amir is brutal. All humans are brutal. She's not wrong about that. He's a liar. Do you know they had your baby killed? And then he tried to set me up for it. Hmm. Amir murdered my child. And I lost my brother. And your man. We can do that. One child for another. You get a double piece for the elves. We can do that. You just have to. Don't do touch me. Yeah, sis. Your hand, just because you didn't actually. Yeah, you, you may not have pulled the knife, but you are definitely an accomplice. And so will you. Mm. If you'd come to her with the truth before all this, she might, she might have seen your side, but now it seems like you're serving yourself, which you are. Guess who's the new king? So much for you running away. I don't know, but I will find out. How did her hair quit change so quickly? Philippa's real magic is how she gets them Bantu knots in in record time. Heavy as the head, Radovid, with your brother's blood still freshly on the crown. Long live King Radovid! Ooh, masterfully done. You are so tangled in this web, Radovid. But how long you'll even get to be king is the question. It's not a good place to be in in a war at all. We've all lost um, our history. Oh, kind of like the elves. We need to eliminate Vilgefortz. Passionately. It's up to us. That's it. Always has we been, really. How we move forward. Look at that. No more men telling you what to do. Let's get it together, ladies. To help the white flame start a war. And I couldn't do it. So I ran. You're pretty good at that. If I keep carrying this hatred, it'll kill me. Oh, look at that. Some reflection. Finally. If you see her again, tell her I forgive her. And that I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know if she had any, done any, she did anything to deserve your forgiveness, but okay. At least you're letting go of this stupid hatred you had for her for something her grandmother did. 
Mitch, uh, shop on the Simpsons. <laughs> why? Why would you do that? Is he all out of potions? Is that why? Because I was wondering why he didn't drink one when he was fighting uh, Vilgefortz, but it didn't occur to me that maybe he was out. He hasn't had to do, you know, access to his normal Witcher things for a while. Hit her with the, sir, let's not act like you have combat skills. Please just continue to write your songs. And that would have been the end of you. Yep. Damn, she's good. Who's gonna clean the top of those windows? There's no getting up there. Why is your breastplate made your boobs look so small, sir? An auspicious day, my lord. Oh God, what's, wow, wow, why? Why do you look like that, why? That is way too many words, I've. Is that her? I've only seen hair. Can I see the face? Is it actually her? Or one of the elves that they brainwashed? A pleasure, your grace. Love it. I'm glad that happened to your face. So you're playing a very dangerous game, Vilgefortz, and I think you're gonna lose. Very dangerous game. Really? You look terrible. She's not worth more than what's between her legs, the wee thing. Still wouldn't mind a turn. That's disgusting. <laughs> Please kill them all. You see? This bitch is high ball. Exactly. I had nerve of you. Having a party without the rest of us? The fuck is she? Son of a bitch. Yeah, who is she? She's an elven badass. That's who she is. Wait. That's the girl from the from the magic, you no, know, from the show, from the with the who stole her Soul Series bag. Are these all women? Is this a bad a group of badass bandit elf women? Cause I'm down. Okay, sir. He said, "Don't you dare mis underestimate me." Okay, there's guys in this group too. All of this. Was it worth being bandits, guys? Was it? That looked like fun. Really, sir? Really? You think it's going to go well for you? How about a fair fight? That's true. My girl's no slouch. She's like, thank you. What were you saying about the prize between my legs? Let's see how you do against a human. I mean, humans are easy. You'll pay for that, you highborn bitch! Really, she? Highly unlikely. She's playing with him. Yes, she is. She's like, I have no idea who my daddy is, sir. No idea. Don't look at me like that, sir. You were so ready to kill me a few minutes ago. Now you're looking at me like you sad. Is this going to be the arc of Siri the Bandit? Because I'm I'm not against it. That looks nice. Oh, I wouldn't touch that if I were you. Dear friend. Oh, not the dear friend letters again. A woman with cold blue eyes was following you. Any more out of you, but she will leave. This is not the time. It's not the time, Geralt. I know. I I know it sucks, but you really can't save everyone. Afraid. Until now. Because she's taken everything from you. Damn. Well, you know, Garrett has been looking for a fight. He's feeling very helpless for the last little while, and he needs to get this out with somebody. This wasn't the fight to do it, but and now you've let everyone know where you are. I mean, I mean, I was gonna say, but let me take that back. He is a white-haired Witcher. They were gonna figure out he was there one way or another. <laughs> yes, you're actually becoming helpful in a fight. I knew she'd come. Hey, friend. She took them out with one one draw, y'all. It's one. It's what y'all see. That was one draw, three air. Okay, Robin Hood, who? I know. I know. You would have been dead. I'd be dead now. Yes. Everyone's safe. <laughs> you okay? You okay, Esker? I will free Siri. Okay. 
Hit him again. Here's your door. Please ignore all the bloodshed and carnage that I've created that's going to scar you mentally and emotionally forever. <laughs> I know in my heart, Geralt, you will find Ciri. Yes, he will. And I will make sure there's a safe world for her to return to. I feel like that's the right move. Oh, my love. Oh, my love. You Look know. where we've gone. From episode one to this. They tell you it's going to feel bad. Taken alive. But it doesn't. It does. But in some cases, it's necessary. What's your name? Jane. Jane Doe. Call me Falca. Interesting. I guess that means she's ready to let it all burn down. Sees that everything? I guess it would be. All right, guys. Well, that was the season finale of The Witcher. And yeah, there was, uh, there was a lot to process as far as uh, kind of where we're setting the world up going into the next season. So yeah, we saw that for a good chunk of the episode, Geralt was still on his healing journey and I had a suspicion last episode that some of his slowness to heal was because he was resisting emotionally, mentally. It's been a long time since Geralt's had a beat down like the one that he experienced at the hands of uh, Velgefortz. And it's interesting that in this episode, he, he chose the words, I let him beat me. Now, I don't think that's, I feel like it was a little of two things. Like we already know that Geralt is a force to be reckoned with. Like he's very strong, he's very fast, but he's not the best out there. Let's be real. Like there's going to be someone eventually that's going to be better than him, faster than him, stronger than him, whatever, right? It's, it's not a matter of him always being able to win, but I do wonder if there was a certain part of him that's just gotten very tired, right? He loves Siri. Of course he will love Siri. He wants her to be okay. But knowing that Yennefer is there now and Yennefer is powerful and that she has the same passion for protecting Siri that he does. I almost think there's a small part of him that almost thought, you know, well, if I don't make it through this, if I don't keep going, there's still somebody out there to fight for her. There's still somebody out there who'll protect her. So maybe it's okay for me to just not keep fighting. Like, because when you think about Geralt's life, it has not been a happy one. Like the happiest part of his life was for the first two years with his mother. And then that came to an abrupt, very just scary end when you think about it and then it went from there to a life of pain suffering ostracism just and then fighting battles violence like he really hasn't had, had real, real peace since then and that's not really a great existence i mean he had a purpose and of course being a witcher and defeating these monsters and protecting mankind but it's not necessarily the most fulfilling of callings and we saw it back in episode or season one i should say where Geralt really thought that, you know, he could continue to live that way, but he didn't realize that he wasn't living until Ciri came into his life and then they forged that bond and then he fell for Yennefer. And it's like this life that he's had over the last few years has really been the reminder of him that there was so much more to his life and so much life he hasn't lived because he lived for just taking down monsters. Like the, the sense of family, the sense of belonging, the sense of loving someone and being loved back. That was something that he, I don't even think remembered how much he needed because the last time he ever felt something like that was when he was a child. And so I think that, you know, him being, him having a life like that for so long, it's exhausting. It's an exhausting life. And in his mind, he knew that even if he somehow has Siri, there's never going to be an end to what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like if he, we saw when Siri last episode said, hey, let's go, or not last episode, the one before where she said, we should just find a, a quiet corner someplace, live out a simple life. Let's not, let's stay outside of all of it. And he's like, we can't do that. Like, of course he told her about the situation with all the elven girls being kidnapped. But even beyond that, it's the fact that they would always be chased. Like there would always be somebody or something trying to come after Siri, trying to get Siri's powers something like it was just never going to be a peaceful life for them and he knew the only way that was going to happen for them to even have a chance at a peaceful life would be if they have to fight they're going to have to do more fighting there's going to have to be a war there's going to be a have to sorry going to have to be an elimination of the people who relentlessly keep coming after her and that's just right it's not just amir amir is like yes he's he's the focal point but there's armies and battles and so much that they have to go through before they even get to him so and that's just him that's not even counting again we've then we've got redenia whatever the hell philip is on we still have um uh who else is looking out for him too vilgefortz too like even if he like if vilgefortz has got his own agenda going on besides amir so you get the point and the wild hunt we didn't even come back to the fact that the wild hunt is in this sphere so so many things 
so many battles still left to be to be waged. And I think that subconsciously, I don't think Geralt even realized how tired he was <laughs> and how exhausting the idea of doing that was for him when his whole life, for the most part, has been fighting and violence. And so I do think there was a part of him that almost kind of wanted it to end with Vilgefort. It's like, if it had to go down, let let it happen with somebody who was genuinely very strong and had a lot going on and not just because, you know, he, he, he gave up per se, but like, if that's the way to go, then that's the way to go. And so, yeah, that happened obviously. And he ends up there and we see the dryad. So they tried everything. We know Triss did her best and he just wasn't healing. Not, not to the point that they thought he should. And so we see that they said that uh, the reason they think it wasn't working was because he's a mutant, right? He's not fully human, but I do think it was an emotional block. I think there was a part of him that kind of didn't want to heal, that kind of wanted to revel in just being idle for a while, for once. But then we saw when Yennefer showed up and basically said, yeah, like things are bad. I still don't have Siri. I don't know where she is. Word on the street is she's on her way to Nilfgaard. And, you know, to say is gone. So we, we don't have this magical community around to protect her anymore. That fire that was inside of Geralt was reignited, right? Like it, it had dimmed, but it reignited because he realized, okay, no, I still have a job to do and that's to protect Siri. Like I still have to come up and make sure she's okay. And I think also that speech between, not speech, that talk between him and Yennefer where they both affirm that they need each other. And again, that's the first time we've heard Geralt admit the fact that he needs somebody, right? Because that's, if you look at Geralt of season one, he doesn't need anyone, right? That's the whole point of a Witcher. We were loners. We only we rely on ourselves. We don't need anybody. Going from that to, I need you, Yennefer. I need Siri. That's a huge step in growth for Geralt as a character. And so that was what he needed. He needed to recognize that he still needs these people. He still has a purpose. And then when he says, I need you to heal me, Yennefer, he's open to it. He wants that healing now because he has a purpose to go forward. He has a reason to fight through and heal his body. And so, because even remember, he was refusing to even eat, right? He'd given up. So yeah, he got his, his, his mojo back. One could say he got his groove back. Yennefer was able to heal him. And again, I also think that Yennefer's magic is something else too. But anyways, she is able to heal him better than anything else that's worked thus far. And then he finally was able to start training up and get better. We have this other character here, the archer. I'm not sure if we were introduced to her before. I don't remember her if we were introduced to her last season or something. But anyway, she's a badass character and Geralt needs all the help he can get. Like, <laughs> he's, da he's damn good. But as we saw, she had a six in this one. So we definitely need her around. I like her. I like the kind of no-nonsense attitude she has. And I like that she's still showing that Geralt, that he still has some things to learn despite all of his experience and his, his deadliness. There are still holes and there's still gaps in his knowledge and she's there to kind of fill them. And Yaskir, of course, being back on a path that makes him feel like he's doing exactly what he should be doing. So they are now on their way to Nilfgaard because they believe that Ciri might be on her way there. But we found out, we might as well just jump into that because it's kind of a small part, that Vilgefortz is playing a game. He's still playing a game. And I mean, we know this because in the last episode we saw him, he let, was it Tisea? Yeah, or, and Geralt, actually. Both Tisea and Geralt. He let them know that, like, Nilfgaard is not his concern. He doesn't really care about them. He doesn't care about the war. He has his own plans, his own ideas about what he wants to do, and he needs Ciri to do it. So he's saying that Nilfgaard is just a means to an end for him at this point. And so we know now, we, all, we, we found out a couple episodes ago, that he is the one that was behind all of the brainwashing and kidnapping the girls to figure out how to turn them into his puppets. And... I think he wanted to get Siri to try his spell, but as we know what happened and we saw what happened to his face, like, damn, he deserved it though. But anyway, <laughs> we see what happened to him. Um, he wasn't able to get near Siri, so he went to his backup plan, which is this girl who we were introduced to earlier in the season. We know that's not the real Siri, but he's brainwashed her into believing that she is Siri. And it looks like despite the Druid's best efforts, she wasn't able to break that spell. And I do hope the Druid's okay. I'm a little worried now that maybe she's not. But anyway, she's now there. And from the looks of things so far, Amir is believing that it is Siri. I don't know if he, there's any way he can check that because obviously he's not seen Siri since she was a baby. So he has no idea if it really is her. And the one person who could actually prove that it isn't isn't there, which is Kahir. Kahir has been MIA since he decided to let... Well, he basically said that Ciri could have taken him out or whatever, but it sounds like he no longer wants to work for Nilfgaard or at least work for Amir. So we don't know where he is, but he is the only person now. I'm trying to know, did, did Frangilla see her? I don't remember if Frangilla's seen her. Francesca definitely has too. So anyways, there's a few people who could definitely say that this isn't Cirilla, 
But we'll see what happens with that. Uh, speaking of Frangilla, we see that she went back to Nilfgaard. She's striking up a deal. She's saying, hey, me and Francesca, we should go up to the north, take over Sintra for now, become like your vassal, you know, lords until you're ready to move things up because you're going to need to take time to get um, Cirilla up to date to what you need her to do. And Amir agrees, but he says that the price for Francesca is that she has to leave the Scoatel, which is like her warrior's behind to fight for them but she can take all the weak and the elderly and basically everybody who can't fight back with her to Sintra and we see that this really was just a fake plan by Frangilla she doesn't want to work for him anymore she's saying we're just doing this so that Amir is not looking at us and you know get paying us any mind when Siri shows up we kidnap Siri we get out we use we, we we use her and basically get ourselves free from Amir right which I understand like Frangilla is done with men okay <laughs> Frangilla is done with men right now. She's done with being told what to do by men. She's done with being fooled and used by them. So she just wants to figure out a way to get, get herself out of the clutches of men. And she wants Francesca to do that with her. But Francesca is saying that I don't know that that's the right move. Like my, my people have been through so much. I've lost my, literally my entire family now, my brother, my kid, my husband, there's no one left. My elven followers are all I have left. So I have to try to protect them, even if it means sacrificing the Skoatel. And we see that Frangilla is so anti that idea. She basically says to him, like, you can't trust him here. He will never, ever honor what you think he's going to honor where you're concerned and then she finally lets go of the big secret that Amir was behind the assassination of the baby and that she's held on to that knowledge all this time and that really it was her feeding that information to Amir that even led to that so we see that Francesca is like listen uh now that I know this information like I will not trust Amir fully but at this point I'm gonna move the way I want to move because I'm getting revenge but right now I'm sticking with the plan. So Frangilla, I don't know where she's going to go from here. That leaves her a bit frustrated. I don't think that Francesca is going to give her up just yet. But once again, Frangilla's found herself in a very precarious position. Um, but I do respect that she's trying to get herself free of, you know, the control of anyone anymore. But yeah, the fact that she thought that Francesca was not going to be very upset at her for the role that she played in the death of her child was crazy to me. So, I mean, at least she's trying to atone in her own way, I guess, which is better than nothing. But we'll have to see where she fits in next season. She definitely is the wild card uh, as far as like uh, mages in this series. Not too much on the witches back at Eretuza. They're seeing what little they can salvage. Obviously it's gone. We see that um, of course the big event to is no more. She just, as I said, I'm not sure if it's hundred percent all guilt, if it's all sadness, if it was just the fact that she felt like she failed. But I do think it was an overwhelming sense of failure why she decided to do what she did. Eretuza was her legacy. Eretuza was everything. She poured her life her heart, her soul, everything into Eretuza and the fact that it was all gone. And even though it could be rebuilt to some extent, I think that to say I knew it was never going to be the same and that things going forward were going to be very different and very hard. And yeah, I think she just felt like her life's work had been destroyed in a matter of moments. And it was more for like between that, finding out the first man that she chose to love, maybe ever used her and his her connection to him is what led to the destruction of her life's work, it was just too much for her. It was too much. And it, I guess she just couldn't see her way out of it in that moment. She couldn't see a reason to continue, even though she had her daughters who still very much looked up to her, especially Yennefer. Yennefer loved her so much and it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. So she is no more. But as I said in the episode, I think that they've been grooming um, the character of Yennefer to very much be the next to say and not in the sense of like being exactly like her but being a leader in the magical community i think that was always something that they were leading up to throughout the season so yes goodbye to say i am sad to see her go i love that actress i think she did a fantastic job with the role and i like to say his character a lot as well i think it was great for yennefer to have someone like that in her co corner all these years but i also think that yennefer has come to the point where she's kind of outgrown her need for to and this was kind of a sadly very harsh shove in that direction of her having to take that leadership on by herself. So anyways, we see that they did go and um, rest, well, take the bodies of those girls that had been kidnapped and gave them a proper burial. And then Yennefer said, look, okay, well, now that that's done, we have to get back to work. Like the brotherhood is gone for like the old brotherhood is effectively gone. All the men are gone. It's true. All the men of the brotherhood have passed now. So it is just the women that are left. And she's like, we've, we've been given an opportunity here to finally have agency over what we do. We heard to say a talk on how 
all the things she's done up until that point were to try to get the women a seat at the table in what was a very misogynist organization. So here's their chance. The misogynists are all gone now. Now it's their turn to actually do something different and prove that to say his work was not in vain. That's what their mission is going forward because like she said, she's done all she can for Geralt. And in her letter, we saw her writing to Geralt. She said, going forward, we're gonna have to work at... Um, creating a world that's safe for Siri, a place where she can come and learn about her magic should she survive all of this, that's going to actually be a safe place for her and not just a place of, again, people trying to either take her out, be jealous of her, or use her. So I think that's a really smart thing for her to do because, again, and while Yennefer would be very helpful by Geralt's side, there's so many other things that still need to happen. We still need some form of leadership in the North now because going that just dovetails into Redenia, the king of Redenia, the former king of Redenia is dead. And that is because he is, well, first of all, as soon as he threatened Philip, I, I knew it was a wrap, right? If he, wouldn't, if he hadn't already put plans in place to get rid of Philippa. There was no way Philippa was going to allow herself to be taken out by that man. So yes, he is no more because he wanted to basically hide. He wanted to pull Redenia out of the, out of the whole war race, so to speak. But as I said, more importantly, he threatened Philippa and Philippa, we know, does not take orders from anyone. And so we see that he told Dijkstra that he was going to take Philippa out and keep Dijkstra, but Dijkstra is literally... Philippa's sub, so there was no way that was going to happen. Um, interesting, though, the parallels that they said that because we saw the argument between Tissaia and Philippa, and Tissaia said that Dijkstra was going to be the one to betray her at some point, but Philippa got the satisfaction of knowing that Dijkstra would never do that. And again, I feel like that's more because Dijkstra is just a sub, as I said. I don't think it has to do with true loyalty. He just has a weird, weird dominant relationship with her. So anyway, she set up her little, her little girlfriend on the side to take out the king, because she's expendable. And now they've got Radovid in his place. And Radovid, as we've seen, he's not as simple-minded as his brother was, but he's terrified of Philippa as he should be. He very much understands how powerful Philippa, and after seeing what he witnessed at Eratusa, he definitely is not going to directly go against Philippa at this point. So he will be their puppet king, unfortunately, for now. And a bit sad for him, I guess, because he really wanted to leave and go find Yaskir. But that life is gone for him now. He no longer can be the, the, the roguish prince that gets to do what he wants. Now he is a figurehead and we'll see what he does. I mean, I'm saying this now, but maybe he'll surprise us and turn out to be a little bit stronger and smarter than his brother ever was. But for now, he has been put in a very crazy position whilst grieving his brother, who he actually did love. So yeah, that's Redenia. We'll see what Philip has got in mind here. She thinks that she's going to be able to outsmart. She thinks Vilgefortz is who she needs to worry about, but we'll have to see how that goes anyways. But Redenia, that's where they're at. And was that pretty much it? We had a little moment with the, the black elf boy saying that he forgives Siri finally. I don't know. That doesn't really matter to me much at this point. Like, he's so much of a footnote now in this series that I don't even know why they wrapped that up. I would be surprised if he's in season four, honestly, because I feel like he his arc literally wrapped up last season. But anyway, I think that's everybody outside of Siri, of course. We finally, Siri was not in this episode. I mean, she had a whole episode last episode. So that's why I'm not that upset about the fact that she was literally only in this one for about 10 minutes. But we see that she, of course, we know she wasn't actually brought to, um, to Nilfgaard. She was on her way, like someone was going to try to get her turned in for bounty. But she see that she was rescued by the very girl that stole from her back uh, when she was just outside Eratusa. And so we don't know who these bandits are yet. At least I don't. Although I'm wondering if it has anything to do with that pre that prequel that we saw earlier last year, the prequel, the Witcher prequel. Maybe she's the child of that. I don't know. I might be just creating a connection that's not there. But anyway, uh, she was rescued by them and she is not telling them who she really is, which is a smart idea. But I also think that once again, Cirilla just is not ready to accept the weight that comes with her name. Uh, like I said, last episode, she said she relinquishes her power. I think again, she's gonna try to hide behind whoever Falca is gonna be for her now and try to maybe run with these people for a while so she can again try to run from her destiny. But we all know her destiny never lets her go. You can't run from who you are. So we'll see how long that lasts for her next season. But yeah, she's definitely in some sort of place right now, emotionally and mentally. We don't know where she really came out of after her trials in the desert, but we'll have to wait till next season to find out what it is and where she's at and what steps she's gonna take next. But I feel like this merry band of misfits will turn out to be quite helpful to her. So I'm glad that she's met some new friends and peers. But yeah, that 
that was pretty much it. Um, this whole season, I think, was not as, I don't know, I, I, I heard it got some bad raps. I don't think it was that bad. I do think there was slow story building here, I think, compared to what people are used to from season one and season two. But I don't think it was bad. I think that we still got some good storytelling, some good character development, some great moments between our core three. And it still has me interested in kind of wondering where this story is going to lead to as far as series story, especially. But yeah, knowing that it is Henry Cavill's last season is really heartbreaking. I mean, he's been an amazing Geralt, an amazing Witcher. I feel like he embodied the role so perfectly. And yeah, I was heartbroken when I found out he didn't want or he wasn't going to con uh, continue. I really wish Netflix could have done more to convince him to stay. If I mean, again, maybe he just really didn't want to do it anymore. But all the same, thank you, Mr. Cavill, for your work. It was very much appreciated. You will be missed. And I am still very much on the fence about whether or not I'm going to watch the new season. I'll wait until the materials, the trailers and all that good stuff start coming out for it. And I think I'll make my decision then. But for now, it's still a question mark. But it has been a really fun journey. I do enjoy the show a lot. I love the lore. I love the world. So who knows? I might come back for that, even if it isn't my beloved Henry playing my favorite role. But yeah, all in all, I enjoyed this season. I thought it was pretty good. I don't think it was terrible. Uh, was it perfect? No, but I think that the good definitely outweighed the bad and I did enjoy watching it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love to this video. If this is all that you watch from me, then I hope to see you again in one of the other shows that I watch. I watch a lot of good stuff all the time. So please do stick around. Um, and keep watching if you're down for that. And if uh, you watch other things of mine, then I will see you in the next video.